Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Kogi in Focus, the program that beams the searchlight on happenings and developments in and around Kogi, Nigeria's confluent state in the last seven days. I'm Oluwatosin Usuji. In today's edition, Governor Bailu, other APC members react positively to the emergence of President Muhammad Buhari as winner and presidential election flag bearer following primaries conducted across the state. Candidates also emerge to contest National Assembly elections at the different senatorial districts and federal constituencies across the state. And when we hit the streets, we will be hearing the people's assessment of Nigeria at 58. These and more when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. Kogi State's All Progressives Congress APC returning officer Abdullahi Bailu during the week announced President Muhammad Buhari as the winner of the just concluded primaries elections held across 21 local government areas ahead of the 2019 presidential election. Abdullahi made a declaration in Lokoja at the gathering of all Progressive Congress delegates and members from all local government areas of the state. In the whole of the Tuan government stands at 387,003 votes. By virtue of the power conferred on me by the National Working Committee of our great party, APC, and the party constitution, and under the distinguished guidance and leadership of our dear state, under His Excellency, Alaji Yahya Adosa Bello, I, Right Honorable Abdullah Bello, hereby return Mr. President Muhammad Buhari as the winner and the flag bearer of our great party, All Progressive Congress in Kogi State. Governor Yaya Bello expressed appreciation to the, to the delegates for the successful conduct of the primary elections and described it as a true show of support for the president from the people of the state. We believe in him. We believe in his leadership. He has fulfilled his promise in less than four years under a very difficult economic hardship was able to revamp our economy, he was able to chase away insecurity and he's still fighting insecurity to a standstill. He has been able to successfully fight corruption and he's still fighting corruption. These were his promises. And having fulfilled those promises in less than four years, we in Kogi State here appreciate him a lot and as such, we are 100% for President Muhammad Buhari. He promised to deliver Kogi State to the APC in the first coming elections. The All Progressive Congress in Kogi State has concluded the indirect primaries to elect the three senatorial candidates to contest next year's general elections. In Kogi West, Smart Adeyemi was declared winner with a total of 1,659 votes. In Kogi Central, there were six contestants, with Yakubo Seni declared winner with 110 votes. And in Kogi East, Jibril Issa emerged the party's candidate, polling a total of 2,469 votes. Governor Bailo, in his remarks, promised to support the emerged candidate and urged all party members to do the same. In every contest, there is bound to be a winner and there is bound to be those who may not necessarily get exactly what they want. However, in this particular contest, There is no victor, no vanquish. Because all those, all of them that contested in this particular race are all my brothers, 
were related in one way or the other. I thank all of you for believing in my leadership and for staying steadfast. I will accommodate all of you. And today you can see that we have demonstrated that we are peace-loving, we are accommodating, and we are all progressives. Therefore, I urge all the supporters of the various aspirants who contested before to please shift your sword and then let's harmonize and move as a one united front. On the outcome of both House of Representatives and State of Assembly indirect primary elections across the state, we promise to bring the detailed result next week. The Kogi State Government has dissociated itself from stories making the rounds on social media alleging a verbal attack by Governor Yaya Bailo on his Lagos State counterpart, Akin Miyabondi. In a statement made available to newsmen on Thursday, Director General Media and Publicity to the Governor, Kingsley Fanwo, said nothing could be further from the truth and described the rumor as a handwork of enemies of democracy from within and outside the state. He called the Nigerians to disregard the said flyer picked up on social media and also broadcast on national television, a development he described as unfortunate. The statement contained an appeal to the mainstream media to exercise caution before broadcasting social media messages in the wake of the plethora of fake news making the rounds on different platforms. The statement said the Kogi state government holds nothing official or personal against Governor Ambody, adding that as long as he is still in office, he has the people's mandate. The Kogi state government's denial comes in the wake of a flyer trending on social media where Governor Yaya Bello is said to have accused his Lagos state counterpart of being incompetent and an ingrate. Kogi state Governor Yaya Bello during the week joined other Nigerians to celebrate this year's Independence Day. During his October 1 broadcast, he said independence launched Nigeria as a self-governing entity with plenty of aspirations for the future and enough natural and human endowments to fulfill them. Former U.S. President explains clearly why Independence Day is so important and why we must continue to celebrate it. Firstly, it represents the ideals our founding fathers of all tribes and creeds believe in and fought for. Secondly, no matter how bad things may be in the present, it is a reminder that self-rule is supposed to be better than the colonial rule it replaced. Governor Bello said his administration has worked hard over the last two years and nine months to make Kogi State a better place. I do not deny that some of our reform has been hard, especially in the civil service. But today, people of goodwill can attest that they were necessary to institutionalize good governance. Our civil service is better off today. Apart from weeding out undeserving beneficiaries from our payroll, we are better able to pay salaries. Our aim is to reach the sustained 100% shortly. As for the gains from our civil service and pension reform, we started paying state civil servants 100% of their salaries over the last couple of months. He promised to pay all arrears due to cleared workers soon and gave an update on the recently discovered fraud of 4.3 billion naira perpetrated at the pension board. These findings have been made public and my government is already going after some of the officials that are involved. With this canker worm removed from the system, our pensioners can expect straightforward payment 
of their entitlement henceforth. On the recent nationwide strike called off by the Nigeria Labour Congress, Governor Bailo commended the Labour leader's decision. We are happy that organized labour in the country has reached an agreement with the federal government and has called off its strike over the minimum wage. We assure our labour union in Kogi State of our good faith and hope they will continue to partner with us to avert extra financial burden on government and avoidable industrial actions. He also reeled out efforts put in place to continue to secure lives and property, as well as ensure flood victims get the support of both federal and state governments. 2018 flood waters are still with us, but I'm glad to announce that the worst is over. Currently, we have about 200,000 displaced persons in Kogi State. Some are staying with friends and families in places not affected by the flood, while others are sheltered in any of the 36 internally displaced persons camp we have opened across the state. All of our IDPs will need help in the weeks ahead. As soon as the water recedes sufficiently, we will commence post-flood activities. Governor Bailo said his administration has zero tolerance for violent politics and will not hesitate to visit the full wrath of the law on offenders. <music> Deal on Nigeria's independence, Bishop John Ibenu of Chapel Freedom International and Chairman Christian Association of Nigeria, Kogi's chapter, has called Nigerians to intensify their prayers for Nigeria. Bishop Ibenu, who made the call during a Sunday worship service, also prayed for the state, the nation, and its leaders. <laughs> He encouraged Governor Yaya Bailu to ensure the people's welfare is at the center of his administration agenda. God sits in heaven, he watches everything. And as we move into the next one year, let's embrace righteousness, let's embrace sacrifice, let's embrace the spirit of Nigeria, let's be patriotic, let's be our brother's keepers, let's pray for the nation. We are committed to praying for the nation, praying for the president, praying for the governor, praying for everyone in authority, I'm praying that God will touch the heart of it. Members of the church echo the clergyman's sentiment. Nigeria should look inward and stop looking outward. All we need, all we have is the answer to our nation. So we can make progress. We know that the president is trying to bring up security better. He must put more effort. I think if the government can improve our education system, the health care facilities in the country. Nigeria can be better. There are so many resources in this country. There were more prayers for Nigeria as the youth wing of the Christian Association of Nigeria in the state converged on the indoor sports hall of the Confluent Stadium in Lokoja to seek God's face. <laughs> Government representative at the gathering, Rosemary Shikoya, urged youth in addition to praying, promote what is good for the nation. When you talk about the French Revolution, there are young men and women all in the middle of this. Almost every time there is any major change across the world, all through the generations and all through the nation, it is because young people come to their senses, speak up the challenges.
A number of clergymen were also on hand to admonish the youths who bared their minds on the Nigeria they want to see. The atmosphere was charged with dancing and singing praises to God for keeping Nigeria as one. If you are just joining us, this is Kogi in Focus, a weekly review of happenings in and around Kogi in the last seven days. For your information, contribution, feedback and possible advert placement, please call the numbers displayed on your screen. Or better still, reach us via social media handles displayed on your screen. <music> Governor Yaya Bailu has called on the people of the Ibera ethnic stock, especially in Okene, to continue to live as one. Governor Bailu made the call when he stopped over at the Okene Remodeled Central Mosque to offer prayers. He called Muslim faithful to continue to support the chief imam of the mosque, al Haji Musa Galadima, as Islam as a religion is of peace that cannot harbor hatred and malice. He warned those thinking of causing disharmony to have to rethink as he as a Muslim from Kogi Central and governor of the state will not allow praying grounds to be sources of conflict. <laughs> 5th of October was World Teachers' Day, and teachers in Kogi State have used the opportunity to request the Kogi State government for 100% salary payment as being done in the state civil service. State Chairman of Kogi State Chapter of the Nigerian Union of Teachers, Comrade Ayodele Aderemi, made the remarks on the occasion of the, of the year's World Teachers' Day. Aderemi called for the establishment of a Nigerian Teachers' Training Institute for the enhancement of teachers' skills among professionals. He also called for the full implementation of minimum wage for primary school teachers, as well as a return of primary school teachers' salary to the State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEB. While calling for the harmonization of salary payroll to include all those declared, Adiremi appealed for the payment of salary arrears to teachers who are on the cleared list. The Kogi State Government says it will take deliberate steps to contribute its quota to bridge Nigerians' education funding gap. In a message to mark this year's World Teachers' Day, the State Commissioner for Education and Science and Technology, Rosemary Oshikoya, acknowledged the fundamental role of teachers in the development of society. The statement also paid tribute to what was described as the resilience of Kogi State teachers in the face of trying times. Oshikoya said there is an urgent need to change the notion that the funding of education and the well-being of teachers is a sole responsibility of government and called on all stakeholders to get involved by doing something meaning for teachers around them. The commissioner said the current situation is what informed the Kogi state government's emphasis and priority focus in the proposed 2019 budget for teachers recruitment and training, school security and renovation of structures damaged by natural disasters, among other key considerations. She said proposed endowment bill at the State House of Assembly is another step in that direction, adding that its speedy passage and effective implementation will yield much needed positive impact. Oshikoya spread optimism about the success of the 2019 inaugural Joint Kogi State 2018 Teachers Appreciation, which she said is aimed at identifying, acknowledging and celebrating outstanding teachers in all institutions of learning in the state. First October every year is set aside to celebrate Nigeria's independence. This year was no different. As usual, it also provided Nigerians to take stock of the progress made so far and what else needs to be done. 
a cross-section of opinions of Nigeria at 58 is our focus on this week's views from the streets. Technologically, we have achieved, at least we have satellites now, uh, for information, for discoveries. You know, we have different types of satellites. Then we also have uh, the NIPRI. We have so many things that we, are, we have discovered and uh, we are making use of now instead of importing them. Well, God meant to improve in entertainment because we nowadays have a lot of things. We have a lot of talents in mind. So God meant to improve in entertainment so that we youth can come out and say, yes, when I do this, the government will be aware that they will be proud of themselves and the government will also be proud of us. APC Buhari's administration won and uh, since then he has been trying to curb down the situation of corruption and uh, insurgents in the the northeast. We thank God and uh, people is has been enabling people. Uh, the, in this uh, bo, this Ankor Borua program of Agri and uh, helping the masses and things are getting well. A lot of things have not been fixed. For example, like in terms of education now, because many poor people cannot put their lads in school. Except you have the resources to put yourself in, your child in a commercial school. I'm so happy that Nigeria is 58 today. And we are moving from stage to stage in this life. Talking about which area the government needs to focus on, we are talking about, we are going to talk about industrialization of this country. We need to start manufacturing things from Nigeria. Not anything our pills will be manufactured from outside. And the ones manufacturing from here, they will say it's low standard. And look, iron, you want to talk about cement, we import all those things. We need things, we need to start to manufacture things in Nigeria, yeah. So that everything you see or anything you use in Nigeria should be branded, made in Nigeria. So that Nigeria should grow from that level, yes. Fighting corruption is not, it shouldn't be one man brigade, uh, one man brigade uh, or one man affairs. Because anybody who wants to fight corruption in this country has a very big task ahead of him. So the man at the helm of affairs is a principal, so is somebody who stands by his principle to fight head to toe of corruption in this country now. It's not an easy task. It will only take the grace of God to wipe it off completely. But he can try his best as a human being. Governor Yaya Bello has described the late General Emmanuel Abisoye, the Okpajiri of Ogori land, as a man whose legacy will remain from some time to come. Governor Bello said this during the official launch of the Abisoye Foundation in the city of Ogori, where crowds gathered to honor the late general. Major General Emmanuel Olumiwa Abisoye lived and died a great man. I celebrate him, and I will continue to celebrate him. And I hope we will continue to celebrate him. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. He promised to support the foundation to achieve its set objectives. General Abisoye retired late. He said he was a great man. Like I said, he lived and died a great man. And uh, he never forget where he come from. He continued to serve his people, even, uh, even in debt, because this foundation is to take care of the less privileged, the women, and uh, the people of Ogorimagongo. Uh, my advice to the people of Ogorimagongo, the people of uh, Kogi State, and Nigeria at large, is to emulate him. Continue to leave a legacy behind. Those of us that are in the position of authority today should be able to leave a lasting legacy behind so that we can be remembered and or even immortalized like him. Governor Bailu appealed to the federal government to immortalize late Major General Emmanuel Abisoye in view of his contribution to the nation. 
Members of the family spoke on the significance of the occasion and the life of their late patriarch. The major issue here is to launch the Abisui Foundation, which will be a foundation to cater for education, for the youth, for the marginalized, for the children, and for the undertrodden women in Oguri Magongo uh, community. Before now, His Excellency gave us light where there was no light for over two years. He gave us good road, and today again he came to Oguri Magongo for this great program of General Abisoye. Honestly, it's a good and a new dawn in Ogori Magongo. Late Major General Emmanuel Abisoye retired, was a former general officer commanding 2nd Infantry Division and 3rd Infantry Division of the Nigerian Army. Abisoye was also a former Federal Commissioner for Health and a member of the Supreme Military Council. He died on March 17, 2017, at the age of 81. That's our package on Kogi in Focus this week. Join us same time next week for another seven-day flashback. And don't forget to continue doing to others what you want them to do to you. Amuluwa Tosin Usuji. Have a pleasant week.